I, 29M, found out about my girlfriend, 31F, of 11 years affair and I am struggling to cope. My girlfriend and I have been together for 11 years and have one lovely kid who is 7 years old, as well as another child who is 15 years old from a prior relationship. We met when I was 18 years old, and I took on the burden of raising my stepdaughter as if she were my own. Our relationship, like many others, has had its ups and downs. I was in my early 20s and had never been in a long-term relationship. I made errors, and she made a lot more. However, I have been an honest, loyal, and loving partner for the previous five years. I determined two years ago to be as unselfish and compassionate to everyone around me as possible. I had certain things happen in my life at the beginning of the year that put me in a really bad place. Extremely depressed. She was ideal in the beginning since she was always there for me. She created me a calendar to remind me every day how much she cared for me and she got me a few sentimental items that helped me get through the tough times. I haven't felt like myself in 10 months and I have admittedly retreated, but it was in the darkest times that I realized I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this lady and I began to arrange my proposal. My partner was furloughed for the most of the lockdown, but she finally found a new job that made her happy. My fiancé began to drift away from me in the beginning of October. She no longer stated she loved me, no longer embraced or kissed me, and I began to have doubts. I spent time working on myself and our connection. When I was nearby, she would conceal her phone or swiftly depart WhatsApp. However, she began coming to the gym at the end of October, and one night her class was delayed for hours after she finished work. She said that she would wait outside until the lesson began. It made no sense to me. When I contacted her after work, she said she was in the vehicle. But her explanation was that she was working late at work and rushing to complete things before going to the gym. I activated Locate My iPhone to learn she wasn't where she claimed to be. She was standing outside another man's home. I asked her about it, and she lied, first claiming she was at work, then saying she was going to have a short cup of tea before class, until I finally disclosed that I knew precisely where she was because of the tracker. She complained that I had violated her privacy and that I was some weirdo for following her every move, but she soon admitted that she was there to meet another guy. She had an affair with a guy at her new work. I invited her to come home and speak about it, but she declined and instead switched off her phone. After our chat, she invited him into her vehicle, and they went to a nearby park and spent hours together. I walked over to his home and discovered that they were not there. When I recounted the scenario to his father, his sole answer was sounds about right, he does this. She drove to her mother's home after that, continuing sending him loves and apologizing for going around to his house with the monikins. We eventually chatted and she showed me the few messages she hadn't yet deleted. He was chuckling about how I nearly found out about their romance a few days before when she believed I was looking through her phone. I had not had chance to do this yet. When I called him and informed him about how he was harming his seven-year-old daughter, he smiled and could only answer, I'm not doing anything illegal. I am a one-man band. We ultimately decided that she would ban him from everywhere and that she should quit her new job to focus on us. She revealed some of the other challenges we were dealing with, one of which being money. She would never tell me what type of financial situation she was in. She'd finally admitted to me that she was 400 overdrawn, with another 300 on the way. I was a fool who fell for the notion that she was finally telling the truth and gave her the 700. After a short time, she unblocked me from all sources and unblocked him. I had begged her to go to counseling, but she refused since she couldn't afford it. She spent the 700 to rent a hotel room with a guy with whom she had an affair, which costs the same as counseling. She claims that the previous 11 years have been a nightmare for her, and that I haven't loved her or shown her enough attention. This is not correct. I'm a naturally loving person who lavished her with attention. I'd had a terribly bad 10 months, but I was finally beginning to feel better about myself. She calls me a narcissist day, and we have a lot of you talks. Refuses joint custody. Last week, though, I had my daughter with me five slash seven nights, since she wanted to visit this guy instead. I left every discussion feeling that everything was my fault, that I was useless, and that I should have done more during the preceding year. She refused to sit down with the children to explain what was going on because it needed to be done with herbs so she could calm her children and not feel abandoned. However, due to the fact that I have my kid virtually every night, this is difficult. It's not fair to her. She's asking precise questions about what cheating is. I also wondered why I should have to feel as though I had abandoned her. 
why should we agree to it on her terms? These decisions were made by her, not mine. To top it all off, I found out yesterday that the guy she's chosen has a drug problem to the point that he's not allowed to visit his current children and recently abandoned his ex because he got her pregnant and refused to abort their kid. Sorry if this is confusing or all over the place. My brain is a mess right now. There is a lot more, but I believe this is sufficient. Is there anybody who can give me some advice? Story 2. My, 23F, GH cheated on me, 22M, in Vegas in September of 2018. I honestly assumed I'd be the last one to experience this. This occurred in September of 2018 and I'm still a disaster emotionally. I suppose I'm writing this as a sort of retaliation to help me disconnect. V equals a thieving girlfriend V and I fell in love two weeks before the start of our second year at college, fall of 2015. It would be my first real relationship as well as my first love. We were both people of color working in sustainability, so we were a posy power couple in an especially white industry. I could go on and on about how we connected on every level. One of the strangest things about our relationship was that her face fit like in between my lats. It seemed to fit neatly in between. She was the loveliest, most eccentric person I'd ever encountered. People would often compliment us, saying that we were meant to be together forever, and such words always terrified me because I was afraid of the reality that a relationship may fall apart at any time. During the summer of 2018, I took numerous accelerated courses in order to complete my degree before September. By September 15, I would be returning to the Bay Area, and V would be returning to Portland. We were planning to move in together in the middle of 2019. V's trashy buddy purchased her a plane ticket to Vegas for his September vacation one night in May 2018. 2018. I knew the trip would very certainly spell the end of our relationship, and I warned her of the possibility. She insisted on just refunding the ticket, since she didn't want to attend. She received a big windfall and decided to leave at the last minute. I used to joke with my pals that she'd definitely have one outrageous and that I'd have a free license to do one. I was completely unprepared for what the joke hinted at. She showed me this promise ring before she went for Vegas. Supposedly engaged people wear it to indicate their commitment to not up with other people. Dunno. She flew to Las Vegas on Thursday and stayed until Sunday. She ghosted me for the most of Friday and Sunday, and I immediately suspected something was up since when she's drunk. She floods me with messages and FaceTimes. She contacted me on Monday morning, saying, we need to speak. I knew what that conversation would involve. I assured her we'd discuss it over the phone. She starts by claiming that I've been stuck in a rut all summer due to my courses and ignoring her. She admits to up once with a married, 36-year-old affluent Hawaiian man who treated her like a princess for the whole weekend, bottle service, etc. She highlighted that she would not have up with any single person and would not have up with him since he was married and they would not have any touch after that. I was in shambles. I informed her our relationship was ended and cried for the rest of the day. Three days later, I started to believe I may be able to forgive her. I wasn't going to forgive her right away, but maybe it was a sign that we needed to break up before returning to our separate hometowns. I hoped that we might save our love later on. I questioned. If it was truly worth jeopardizing our great relationship for one drunken encounter in Vegas, but I needed to know the facts before making such a big choice. I questioned her twenty times whether it was a messy or a series of planned. She said it was only one careless night. I didn't believe her, and I needed to be sure I had all the information before contemplating forgiving her. Her Instagram account was linked to my phone. I entered into her group chat with the females and watched the most heartbreaking thing. She was boasting about the inner group text, stating it was the greatest of my life. When I read this, she was messaging me saying she would take it all back for me slash was so sorry swearing it was just one. She was raving about her Vegas boyfriend and showed images of him to her pals. She spoke about how she am all day Sunday and almost missed her flight home because they were up so hard. Remember that on Sunday, she was sending me texts like I love you baby, you are my everything. And I can't wait to see you next week, complete with gushy emojis and things. This was the loveliest girl I'd ever met yet she spoke like an awful. I couldn't believe my eyes. When I read those messages, I felt as though my intestines were being forcefully extracted from my stomach. Gut. Wrenching. To her horror, I showed her screenshots of her group conversation. It was shown that she was lying and that she had multiple premeditated connections. It wasn't just one bad night. I scolded her and all that. 
She didn't sleep for the following five days and had a mental break as a result. She began rushing throughout downtown Portland, alleging that somebody were attempting to murder her. Her father, she was persuaded, was a pedophile. I called my mother and told her I had her. She spent a month in a mental facility before being discharged. Following that, I became an alcoholic for almost a month. All I did was drink beer and play Fortnite. But I got back up, worked two internships, and landed a fantastic job in my profession, which I'm now enjoying. But it seems to be all I have going for me. I'm still a disaster emotionally. I'm still confused and devastated. My self-esteem and value as a man have been shattered. I'm too emotionally exhausted to speak to other females. I went on three dates with this one attractive lady who seemed interested in me, but I couldn't even generate the courage to kiss her. Since my ex, I haven't had a kiss or a nine months now. This week, I have a lunch date with a girl I've had a crush on, so hopefully it goes well. But I'm a broken person. I believe our split was the nicest thing that ever happened to me. It pushed me out of my comfort zone, and I'm pleased I'm not stuck in a long-distance relationship between Portland and California. It shaped me into a man. But at what price? My spirit and confidence have been shattered.